Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you a few different tools that can help make you a productive infrastructure as code developer in the cloud. Now the tools we're gonna be looking at today include Microsoft's Visual Studio Code Editor and the remote containers feature that allows you to develop inside of a containerized environment. In order to create that containerized environment, we're going to be using Docker Desktop, which I already have installed locally here on my Mac. In addition, we're going to be taking a look at an infrastructure as code tool called Pulumi. Pulumi is an open source framework that allows you to define infrastructure as code on any cloud and using any language of your choice, such as JavaScript, Golang, and Python. So before we get started, I'd love for you to leave a comment on this channel to let me know what types of topics you'd like to see and any questions that you might have on this particular video. Additionally, if you learn anything by the end of this video, please leave a like as it really helps encourage me to produce more content for you guys. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you get notified of any future content updates. Thanks. All right, let's jump into today's topic. And today's topic, we're going to use Visual Studio Code here. And I would want to draw your attention to a couple of different extensions that can help us be productive. First of all, we have the Docker extension here, which allows us to manage containers inside of our Visual Studio Code environment. We can also see a list of container images and Docker registries and container networks and volumes that we've created on our local system. Additionally, the other tool that I wanted to show you is called the Remote Containers extension for VS Code. And this is great because this allows us to create a Docker containerized environment and install all of our project dependencies inside of that container so that they don't step on each other's toes with other projects that are on our local system. By giving each project its own container, we minimize the frustration and the time that it takes to troubleshoot different dependency problems on our system. All right, so let's jump into today's topic, which is to create a new Pulumi project. Now I've already installed Pulumi locally here on my Mac. So if I run Pulumi, you'll see that I get a list of different subcommands here. And we're gonna use the Pulumi new command to create a new project. So what I'll do is create a new project directory. Let's call it Pulumi test. And then I'll go ahead and initialize a new Pulumi project with Pulumi new, and then AWS Python. So I'll give my project a name like Trevor2, and we'll accept a couple of defaults here, except for the AWS region. So I want to use the US West to Oregon region. And at the end here, you'll see that the Pulumi CLI gives us a few different commands to create a Python-based virtual environment. But we're actually going to ignore these commands because instead of using Python virtual ENV, we're going to use a Docker container to install all of our project dependencies. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'll do for starters is to open this folder in VS Code. So this Pulumi test project folder that I've created. Now, if we hit Command-Shift-P and search for remote containers, you'll see that we have this option here to reopen our project directory that we currently have open inside of a container. Now, Microsoft provides a few different pre-built container environments, and I'm just going to stick with a base Ubuntu 18 and Git environment because I typically like to start with kind of a bare bones approach. So now that we have this, now we have this folder open in a container, and we can see that by this dev container feature down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It's showing us that we have our workspace in VS Code open into a container instead of on our local system. You'll also notice that we have this new .dev container folder in our project directory, and this contains a few different configuration settings for our VS Code container environment. So we have a Docker file that's been pre-generated, and all this has in it right now is a from statement that's using this base image from Microsoft, but we can also specify an alternative image as well. Additionally, you'll see settings that allow us to install different VS Code extensions, and so what we're actually going to do is install the Python extension for VS Code here. So let's go ahead and search for Python. 
And you'll see that there's an option to install this in the dev container. So I actually have the Python extension installed locally on my Mac, but inside of this VS Code dev container, I don't have it installed yet. So instead of installing it by clicking this button here, I'm actually going to copy the name of the extension from the extension gallery, go back to this devcontainer.json file, and add it to this array of extensions. So next time we rebuild our container environment, it'll reinstall that it'll install that extension for us. Now, in the Docker file here, I'm actually going to override this container with a base image of the common Ubuntu base image. So I like to start with just a, a well-known base image from the Docker Hub, uh, which the Ubuntu is a very well-known container image. So I'm just going to start with that as my base. And then we need to copy a few things, or we need to actually install a few things in here. So I'll do an apt-get update and apt-get upgrade. And that'll just ensure that all of our base packages are up to date in there. And then we also need to install curl. So I'll do an apt-get install curl. And we also need to install Python 3 along with pip. And then finally, I'm going to install Pulumi here. And we can do that by just copying this command here. And the reason that we needed to install curl is because curl isn't available by default in this particular container image. Actually, I need to put two ampersands here as well. Let's make sure you do that. And so once we get curl installed, then we'll just do a curl on there. We'll get that installed, and we should be good to go. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I also wanted to point out the container mounts here. So we can uncomment this line in our dev container.json, and we can actually mount in our AWS credentials file and our Pulumi credentials file from our macOS file system locally. And we can mount those into the container so that we don't have to define our credentials inside of the container. We don't want to store our credentials inside of the container. And so this will just allow us to mount them into the container using a bind mount. So uh, make sure that you add a comma up here just so that we have valid JSON since we did uncomment this mount section. And in the mounts here, we'll just use option shift down arrow to duplicate that line and we will put a comma to separate this array here. And the paths that we want to specify here are our local file system path for Pulumi. So that'll be my home directory .pulumi slash credentials .json. And then inside the container, it'll be my home directory, which is slash root slash .pulumi slash credentials .json. And then for my AWS credentials, Similarly, we'll take my home directory locally, .aws slash credentials, and then we'll stick that under slash root slash .aws credentials. Now, once you've made changes to your, envir your container environment here, what you'll want to do is go ahead and do remote containers, rebuild container. And what this is going to do is it's going to rebuild our containerized environment using all of the different dependencies that we've defined either in our devcontainer.json file or our Docker file that the devcontainer.json file actually references. So let's go ahead and give this a minute here to build, and we will review the logs just to keep tabs on it. Okay, so now our container has finished rebuilding. And so let's go ahead and open up a new terminal session inside the container and just verify that we can run Pulumi. Now, if we try to run Pulumi directly, it's going to say command not found because the location where it gets installed is not available by default. So it's actually under root.pulumi, where our credentials file also is mounted. And then there's a bin directory, and Pulumi is actually under there. So we can run the Pulumi command, and we'll just alias it. Or actually, I'm just going to run it this way for now. And so what we'll do is run Pulumi up. And Pulumi up is going to create or update the resources in a stack. Now, the one other thing I'm going to do before we get go any further is just hit Command-Shift-X and verify that the Python extension is installed. And sure enough, you can see a list of your locally installed 
extension. So that's on your native operating system, in my case, Mac OS. And then here under the dev container feature, you can see that that Python extension actually did get installed. So here's our default program that came from the Pulumi template, and we're going to attempt to deploy this. Now our Python extension is complaining that there's no interpreter available. So what we can do is just select this interpreter here. And it's going to complain that my linter is not installed, but we'll just ignore that for now. So if I try to run Pulumi up, I'm actually going to get an error because I have to specify a different profile in my AWS credentials file. So what we'll do here is come into my dev stack YAML configuration and set the profile name to my private profile name. So in my credentials, my AWS credentials file, I already have a credentials profile called SMFA. So I'll go ahead and specify that there in the config. So now let's run Pulumi up from our project directory. It'll ask us which stack we want to update. So I'm going to update the dev stack. And you'll see it's complaining here because there's actually some dependencies we need to install. So there is a pip requirements file here. And if we do a pip3 install-r requirements, we can go ahead and download the Pulumi and the Pulumi AWS packages from PyPI. So now that those have been installed, let's go ahead and try to rerun our Pulumi up command. And you'll see that it's complaining about there being uh, a missing plugin. So Pulumi is a plugin-based architecture, and so what we want to do is we want to install the latest AWS plugin. So what we'll do is we'll just copy the plugin code here and, sorry, run that. And now that that plugin has been installed, we'll go ahead and rerun the command to do Pulumi up. So it's now rationalized the changes that need to be applied to my project. So I'll say, yes, go ahead and perform this update. And then it'll use my AWS credentials to actually go out and reach out to AWS APIs and create the S3 bucket that was specified. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. I just wanted to show you how to set up your Visual Studio Code remote container environment so that you can build your Pulumi projects, your infrastructure as code projects, using an isolated container and minimize the amount of frustration that you have with different projects stepping on each other's toes. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you leave a like and come back for more content in the future. Cheers.